Hey everyone, welcome to Rogues and Recaps. My name is Joshua Barbeau, this is uh, Natalie Wallace, and uh, special guest, Drew Bodoin. Do you want to tell us why yesterday was such a fantastic D&D session? So, uh, I had played with uh, this group for a year and a half-ish, I think? In, in a previous campaign, and I was supposed to start this campaign, and sort of did. I was there for the character creation, and then I moved to Windsor, and Jerk. so I live four hours away now. Yeah, I came back for the weekend to visit, but we didn't tell the rest of the group that I was Whoops. coming. They started, and I snuck in the back door and hid out here. I hid in the kitchen for about 45 minutes. Yeah, with a couple of near... Over the couple calls. of near misses, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, two, two of the players had to go to the bathroom at one point, which is right by the kitchen, and so I came very close to being caught. There's uh, there's a video that I took. I stood out in the hallway just be just outside the door to the gaming room, and... We can probably show that video. It was especially spectacular because you and I had been planning this for some time. Yeah, we, uh, Not this specific weekend because we didn't know when you were going to be able to come up. But you and I were having Skype sessions, one-on-one -on -one Skype sessions, in which we developed your character. That started uh, last August or something. Yeah, like a long time ago. Yeah. Your character was operating in the game world. Our, our game is set in the Forgotten Realms in Faerun uh, on the Sword Coast. And you've been running around the game world doing all kinds of crazy adventures, interacting with... Uh, some pretty big uh, Faerun celebrities. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, as well as... Uh, spoilers, Lala! Spoilers. <laughs> she, yeah, she doesn't actually know this yet. His character was doing things in the game world, and some of the things he was doing was actually impacting the players, but they had no way of knowing that they were being impacted by the decisions made by a human player who was playing with me separately. One-on-one -on -one sessions are really, really fun too. There's if something you that haven't done often enough, I don't think. I don't think they're done a lot. Uh, they're intimidating to start, mm -hmm. both for the dungeon master and, and for the, the player. player. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although but, I like the fact that prior to your reintroduction into the group, um, we got to do a session. Yeah. With, it, it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's like a two-on-one, -on -one, which yeah. was nice because it's a smaller group. It becomes a nice lot more concentrated. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we had a little <laughs> we had a little flashback session in which her character got to meet Drew's character uh, two, two, years. E two years prior to the events of of the campaign as we've been playing it. But we had that, and then that was it. That that let them meet so that when Drew's character showed up, one of the players knew whose who that was, and and was like, "No, you should listen to what this person has to say." You should actually trust them. They're and, and I should trust them too because yes. yes, my character. Basically went okay, cool adventuring party because I know this one and you know we almost died. And then when I put you guys finally in the room together, then I'll, all I had to do was sit back and say, "Hey, okay, well, uh, you don't <laughs> role play. I, role play. What you don't you need a dungeon master for this part." I think you literally said that. You're like, yeah. Role play. <laughs> okay, cool. You guys get to role play now. And I went. And I think yeah. my favorite part was also you telling me, "Well, we need to have a pre you and me to have a solo session before our game on Sunday." And I you didn't, didn't realize know that he was going to be part yeah. of that session. So that part was really exciting because meanwhile I'm thinking, okay, what are we doing with Drew? He's over at our house. What the hell? Turns out, no, you're in the session, which is great. So it was also kind of, I got even more of an inside peek into what was, I actually have no idea if it was anything from that session eventually relates to the future. I'm sure it eventually does. But oh, yeah. It, was kind of a it neat did character. for him, not necessarily for you. Yeah. Oh, God. But anyways, it was still <laughs> really cool to be able to have that kind of like, I know this NPC now before going into this, so then this NPC shows up and it's exciting. I it's know not them. even really an NPC. No, but, a PC, it was, but it's just like but playing along with it. And I think that's something that we that that we should highlight too is that because I'm because I used to be part of the group and I know okay. everybody, um, and I want to try to to have an excuse to come back and visit more often. Josh and I talked about it, and we decided uh, that the the way that he described. How, who he wanted my character to be was basically the Gandalf of this campaign, and I kind of love it, even though my character is nothing like Gandalf. No, your character is nothing like Gandalf, <laughs> but your character the kind role. of fulfills the same role that Gandalf filled mm. in The Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, in The Lord of the Rings, you know, Gandalf isn't present the whole time. He shows up near the start, and he says, you guys have to go on this epic quest, and then he runs off to Isengard. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. It says, I'll meet you in Rivendell. Oh, yes. And then they go on this huge quest to Rivendell, where eventually he does re-encounter them in Rivendell. And then he travels with them for a short while until they get to Moria, where where the point is Gandalf is a reoccurring 
a uh, special guest star where he shows up in the Lord of the Rings for a brief period. He's not one of the player characters if the Lord of the Rings were tabletop uh, a tabletop RPG. I'm sure I don't, that is the role that Drew's character is going to be fulfilling. And if I don't get to say the, the phrase, fly you fools, at least once, I'm going to be very angry. Well, we'll, we'll work yeah. on that. But we might be going to the airplane. Yeah. Get out! <laughs> Maybe you only have three players who can show up to your D&D game on a regular basis. And you have a handful of other friends who are all interested in trying out the game, but none of them want to commit to showing up every week or every other week or whatever your regular game session is. To those Dungeon Masters, I heavily encourage them to try this idea of letting people be a special guest star. If you think of your game like a, uh, an episode in a TV show, let someone be the special guest star for that episode. Or for Tell, a small arc yeah, or something. For a, or yeah. for a small arc, two or three sessions in a row, or even just one session. And it was really nice, because I wasn't the focus of the session. I wasn't the spotlight. And as somebody who has both played and DM'd for two decades now, this is a really interesting middle ground. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I, because I was a player, and it was all of it. It was very much about my character and her personality and her goals. But I was also delivering exposition, and I was introducing... Two plot points plot. that they didn't really realize they had even interacted with already. And nope. decided not to give all of them away, because yeah. she wouldn't. So I, there are actually still plot points that I, that I know. Tell me more. No. When a player knows something, and they want to keep it a secret, but then I'm, as a dungeon master, throwing at them potential reasons why they might have to reveal that secret, and then they are faced with the decision of, okay, is this, uh, should I reveal my mm -hmm. secret? Uh, in order to gain this, or am I going to, is this not worth revealing my secret? Am I going to keep it to myself, and at what cost is that going to happen? And what that does is it creates some very exciting role-playing moments mm -hmm. in the game mm -hmm. where secrets become revealed naturally. Mm -hmm. yeah, a dungeon master should not be the only one who has all the secrets. Yeah. You know, I am a firm believer that the players tell the story, the dungeon master just creates the framework for it. So I want to give you guys as much tools to tell the story as possible, and the secrets that you each know are a, a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's always sometimes a reason for it, and you don't want to just lay out all the cards on the table, even as a player, and yeah. so there's totally reasons to keep things, hold player cards close to your chest occasionally. But and I think it's the best... Invested. Yeah, it gets people invested, and I think it's the best parts uh, about Dungeons and Dragons is when the the characters are ha are in those points where they have to make hard choices between the developments, the personal developments that the characters are having, and the developments of the plots that are mm -hmm. going on that they're invested in as well. Speaking of investments in plots, the players are in Waterdeep, and if you know anything about Waterdeep, it's the City of Splendors, the shining uh, crown of the north of of the Sword Coast. In Faroon's Faroon. Manhattan. It's Faroon's Manhattan. Now. My players had been to all kinds of different towns throughout the Sword Coast, but they hadn't been really to, Fair to, to Waterdeep yet. The, the game started in Waterdeep, but it, they were just leaving Waterdeep at the start of the very first session, so they didn't really explore Waterdeep. And I really wanted to emphasize that sense that there's always something going on in Waterdeep. There's so much going on in Waterdeep. It's overwhelming how much is going on in Waterdeep. So I made this entire session. It was just about nothing but plot hooks. The very first part of any adventure is usually a plot hook, the thing that grabs the player's interests and gets them on a quest to do something for do some reason. Thing. Yeah. I made this whole session nothing but plot hooks. You guys were just bombarded left, right, and center with plot hooks. Actually, literally. Yeah. I don't you, think I actually wrote down the No, fast. you didn't write them all. I you didn't write all of them. You missed them. Yeah. In fact, some of them you may not have even realized were plot hooks. I, I just dropped little things here and there, and if you just said, hey, what's that? You would have found out it was a plot hook, but it yeah, wasn't. No. In the City of Splendors, there's always something going on. You cannot go around a corner without someone saying, hey, look, it's a party of adventurers. I have a problem for you to solve. I have a rat problem. Yeah, Not those rats again. <laughs> the same group of rats that actually just keeps traveling to different places and bugging different people. That's just the economy. As a dungeon master, I feel like it worked because I was showing you all the different things you could get involved in, even if you decide to follow one lead, you're going to get interrupted with another lead, and then interrupted with another lead. Yeah, like with Tarragon getting arrested. Yeah, Tarragon got arrested. There's a lot going on in Waterdeep. It's a large city. There's always 20 million things going on. You can't do everything. 
uh, me as a player, I'm very dedicated to doing just the main quest. So I want to just streamline through the whole thing, and I'm like, nope, bypass everything. Will I regret it later? Probably. And I'm the exact opposite. Like in in video games, I gather every single side quest and I have to do every last side quest. It's infuriating to me that I can't, but also, and, and that, that, that was the, the me side of things, but the, the Lady Kestrel side of things was the exact opposite, because I was the main quest, sort of. While Drew is sitting here going, but side quests, I need to catch them all. I, like, Kestrel's like, okay, but the world's ending, you dumbasses! We need to do this! So it's kind of neat seeing you play a character that's kind of opposite to yourself in this <laughs> spec, so. That was the fun part of role-playing. It, it felt like it felt like being downtown Manhattan. Just everything is going on all the time. Everything happens so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't say yes to everything. Yeah, of course. The design quests are what give character de uh, development and give, like, they're the meat on the bones. Mm -hmm. But the bones are still kind of important. Especially when, uh, as, we were, pile of meat. as we were discussing before with secrets and stuff, uh, especially when uh, when your character has you know a personal quest, and then you've got and, and that comes at odds with a main plot quest, and then you've got the character development of what's more important to the character, yeah. save you know saving the world or saving save the cheerleader or, or save the world. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm like, Man, not I know. So anyway, uh, uh, I guess we should give a recap uh, to the session so that everything that we talk about, or have talked about, or will talk about, depending yes. on depending on editing and where this <laughs> where this gets put at the beginning or at the end. But I guess we should do a recap so that everything that we say that has context with which to be said it. So uh, to keep it as brief as possible, the players are have just arrived in Waterdeep. They've spent only a little bit about uh, a little bit of time there. Uh, and already they're dealing with problems. They've got one of their player characters who's mysteriously vanished without a trace and they're looking for him. They went to the Yawning Portal, which is the most famous inn in all of Waterdeep. There they met the famous Warriors of Light, another adventuring group that has more renown than they do. And they don't like that. And they don't like no. that. They call them the Warriors of Blight. They were egged on by a group of hecklers who wanted to see the Company of the Grey Wolf go head to head with the Warriors of Light in the upcoming competition. Future and be before problems. before they really had a chance to really acclimatize themselves to what was going on, because there were so many plot hooks being thrown at them left, right, and center, one of them gets arrested for carrying an illegal narcotic. But then they had to go break this person out of jail, and they wanted to go and follow the main plot hook, the quest that Kestrel had shown up with. They wanted to go save the world from this pending evil. Uh, but they couldn't do that because the city guard would only release this person on the condition that she couldn't leave town until she had done a favor for them. And that favor was get to the bottom of the narcotics ring that was being uh, that was on the rise. You specifically <laughs> avoided saying get to the root of it because it was blood root. Because it was blood root. Yes. Long story short, they did some other things, but it all culminated in them going to the Grinning Lion Tavern where they were to stake out a uh, a, a deal that was going to take place work, for selling the uh, for selling the blood root. Unfortunately, the deal turned sour. This woman showed up that declared the the vendor of the blood root was was to be the subject of some type of mystical hunt. And before we knew what was going on, many of the patrons at the bar turned into werewolves, and that's where the cliffhanger ended. And suddenly we're in underworld. Suddenly yeah. coming to theaters near you. What year is this? Can I be Kate Two thousand nine. Yeah. Can I be Channing Tatum and, and or his angel? Anyway, or, this or, has or, been uh, uh, an episode of Rogues and Recaps. Uh, the first episode of Rogue and Recaps. We hope there will be more. We're having a lot of fun playing this D&D game uh, set in the Forgotten Realms, and we'd love to tell you more about it, both for your entertainment, uh, to laugh at our... Uh, Mistakes. <laughs> our... At us, uh, but also so that maybe there is something in here, some tidbits that you can, some tricks that you can learn that you can then take home to your group at home and uh, and, and apply to make your sessions better. My name is Joshua Barbo, and I've been the Dungeon Master. Uh, I'm Natalie Wallace. And I'm Drew Baldwin. This has been Rogues and Recaps. I hope you guys had fun, and uh, watch out for our next episode. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.